With Mr. Parkin not being so happy with Monday Night Raw, it's left the other half of the British Fist, me and Jay, What's up? to review the show on my own. But the first thing I want to do is congratulate Jake the Snake Roberts for being the next inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame 2014. And what a name this is. He's had a big career, big matches, the speciality of the snake, and the involvement with DDP's care service he offers. So with Jake the Snake Roberts being another member going to the Hall of Fame, it's helping this year at the moment with a big kickoff. The WWE do not ruin this and add someone completely ridiculous because the speciality of the Hall of Fame should be a big deal to you. But congratulations, Jake the Snake. In the opener to Monday Night Raw, we had the authority mocking Daniel Bryan and the WWE fans for not getting what they wanted. As much as this made me laugh, boo hoo hoo, you didn't get what you wanted. It was, it helped to bring the crowd more alive for Daniel Bryan. As Daniel Bryan came out explaining that the fans are here, saying what we pretty much all said at the Rumble. The fans were telling you they wanted me here. They wanted me there, they wanted me everywhere, and you didn't give it to us. Daniel Bryan got in the face of Triple H, a little bit of a tease there to a possible future match, I don't know. But Daniel Bryan coming back into the main event scene, coming back into the main part of the WWE. I like the idea because the fans obviously are telling the WWE he should be there and staying there, even if he's not chasing the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. But this brings out Triple H's backup, which is still the Shield apparently. And this then brings out uh, Sheamus and John Cena to set up the main event. So the opener accomplished what it needed to. But is Daniel Bryan trying to make his way into the uh, Breakfast Club, which is basically the top guys of the company who are always going to be used in a strong place? Then we get to the Real Americans defeating the tag team of uh, Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio. Weren't those two men to feud against each other? I know Sin Cara has had a few botches in his past, but recently he's had many wins. He's going, he went in a good direction. Yes, most of those were against Del Rio. Talk about repetitiveness. Rey Mysterio, he came in as a big name. People were predicting what his future was going to be. The Sin Cara thing was the direction. That's now changed. But scrap those two. This match seemed to be focusing on uh, Cesaro. Is Cesaro getting yet another likely push? Because he was focused on in this match. Even though the um, Zeb Coulter was trying to make it look like it was about swagger. But come on. We all know Cesaro is meant to be the one to get the push at some point. I don't know what you guys think of this guy, but bad news, Barrett. Oh my gosh. Yes, I miss him being the true top possible future heel in the WWE. But his promo work is being used stupendously here. He definitely gets the crowd booing. He gets the crowd listening to him. And when he talks about Cleveland, he says that Cleveland's full of losers. But didn't someone say that Cleveland rocks? <laughs> and yeah, and he basically advertises the match coming up, which is um, Battle of B Battle for Cleveland, which is Miz versus Ziggler. And the match, again, okay performances, but ends with a zigzag out of nowhere. And there was the feeling that the selling weren't good, but the performance was better than the selling. But, take away the match. Barrett, I don't know what you guys think of Bad News Barrett, but I, I, I enjoy him. I think he's great. I think he's brilliant. Just a shame he's not in the ring yet. R-True defeated Fandango. Usos defeated Ryback and Curtis Axel. Del Rio defeated Kofi. When I saw that match, I thought, why not have at WrestleMania 
Del Rio versus Kofi versus Rey Mysterio versus Sin Cara. Because those four seem to be feuding or fighting against each other, mainly against Del Rio. Why not just have them all fight against each other? Combine two possible feuds in one. Just a thought there, because the WWE don't seem to have anything for Del Rio. So why not put him in a match against his months and months of past opponents? We got the choice late, early in the night that Lesnar wanted a match tonight against the current WWE World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton or the number one contender Batista. And it was all down to Brad Maddox to decide who it was going to be or else. And it comes down to the choice that the authority, Brad Maddox, don't make a decision. and. It ends up New Age Outlaws retaining their championship after Brock Lesnar destroys uh, the Rhodes Brothers. I don't know. I do like the tease of Lesnar's future. I've been wanting to see Lesnar going somewhere. But to be honest, I've said this at the Royal Rumble. My liking towards Brock Lesnar has dropped big time over the last few months. I don't care for Brock Lesnar. He, yes, he's a big guy drawing money for the company. But yes, he may still have big matches left in his book. But the booking of Brock Lesnar has not interested me. And his nickname from this current, well, from the Rumble, is Brock the Chair Shot Lesnar. Because that's still chair. It's like his personal toy. His way of looking like a beast. No, Brock. You're meant to be a monster. Go in there. Just grab Cody Rhodes and Goldust and lay them out yourselves. F5 them as much as you can onto the chair maybe. Or just smash them to pieces. I just don't think Brock Lesnar with the chair is bringing out the monster he's meant to be. And just a question before I move on from this. Who would you rather have seen Brock Lesnar face on Raw? Batista, Randy Orton or both? And then we get the 8 Divas tag match which I really don't care about Naomi pins AJ possibly teasing a elimination chamber match which AJ will probably win leaving us with the question who's going to be AJ even though I stupidly had my money on the shield defeating John Cena Sheamus and Daniel Bryan to allow the shield to go into the elimination chamber to continue the tease of the breakup to possibly tease a possible triple threat match for Mania, to possibly give us the strongest Shield member to look like they're going to get pushed later down the line. We have the Wyatt family interfering and costing the Shield the match, which basically means, even though it's a disqualification win, John Cena, Daniel Bryan and Sheamus will be joining Randy Orton in the Elimination Chamber. I'm quite disappointed in this, but it looks like at the chamber for a filler match, we're going to get the Shield versus the White family. I guess you're trying to make as many matches as you can and early teases, early build-ups. So for that, I'll give you credit for. It's just maybe, who would you have wanted to see in the Elimination Chamber? The three possible future um, Breakfast Club members? Or the Shield, which I felt could have continued their breakup, the tease up of who the better Shield member is, the future Shield member, however you want to see it. I also felt that they missed out a possible backstage segment between CM Punk and Kane, who at the Rumble had a pretty much strong segment, but that was possibly missing. But overall, I don't think it was a bad Raw. Yes, things could have been done a little bit more differently, but we could say that about any show. People, share your thoughts Monday Night Raw in the comment section below. Tune in for the rest of the week, the Q&A, the TNA, the Smackdown, the um, NXT review, because there's more to come, and hopefully Mr. Parkin will be back soon. Till next time, people. Goodbye.